welcome to this episode of Self Kind with me, Erica Webb, and my wonderful guest, Rosalie Woods. Welcome, Rosalie. It's so lovely to have you here with me. Thank you, Erica. It's so lovely to be here. And what I really love about being here is that having had uh, met you a couple of times now, I always love the conversations that we have and always go away feeling more inspired myself and um, So I hope that we can do the same for your listeners today. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt. I'm thrilled to be in connection with you today. Um, Rosalie, I love for my guests to introduce themselves because I do think it is lovely to hear who you are straight out of your mouth. Um, So if you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are, and then we'll dive into what we are going to talk about today. Okay. Thanks, Erica. Well, I am... I often describe myself as I'm a flawsome human and Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is that you know I have a number of roles and have played a number of personas in my life you know mother daughter wife um, sibling uh, we're just talking nutritionist PhD researcher uh, renovator, professional renovator, and and now life coach. So I have done a number of different activities in my life, um, but they all come down to me being a flawsome human. And that's someone who's um, always uh, willing to have a go at doing something and, and then changing how things go and modifying uh, so as to improve the outcomes that I get. And One of the things that I really encourage people to do is to become part of your flawsomeness is about owning and accepting um, your own qualities that you've perhaps disowned or um, not realised that they're still playing out um, in your life. And, And it's often our shadow parts, I guess, that help bring us our lighter parts to be lighter. Um, mm. and so, you know, I've done a reasonable amount of work, uh, personal development work of myself to, to come to know what some of my triggers and things are and why I've behaved in ways that I've behaved in the past. And uh, so I don't necessarily uh, behave in that way long term again. So mm. that's what being flawsome is all about. Yeah. Mm. I love that. I think mm. I like the word flawsome because it has inherent to being human, the fact that we are imperfect, you know, and um, I think that what you just spoke about, this idea of there being parts of ourselves that perhaps we have, you know, pushed into the dark corners of our persona um, in order to be able to kind of like face up to our imperfection. We have to be honest with ourselves. And I don't know that we're always so willing to do that, but hopefully I know what we're going to talk about today um, might inspire our listeners uh, to be a little bit brave and look into those parts of themselves. Um, You have had some big, you know, life hurdles. And I know that's a part of your story of, um, you know, divorce and changes changes in career and all of these things that have really shaped the work that you do now and, and who you are and who you help. Um, but today we're going to very specifically talk about something that you call reclaiming emotional qualities. So I'm wondering if we want to start with, if we're going to reclaim emotional qualities, what are emotional qualities and why might we want to reclaim them? Yeah, look, a uh, great question, Erica. And what um, dis, uh, emotional qualities are, they're all of our emotions that as a human, you know, we all have access to absolutely and we all have every emotion within us. I, I The way I visualise um, emotional qualities is a bit like a music soundboard where there's 200 300 whatever number of buttons that you can turn or slide up and down Um, and depending on how quickly or or what combination of those things you happen that is the sound that you're going to hear and emotional qualities to me operates in exactly the same way that we all have them but 
all of us, and, and you see it in a, in a baby, you know, one minute they're sad, the next minute they're happy, the next minute they're asleep. And it literally is, you know, a mm-hmm. second by second process. Yet, you know, as we grow older, we start to hear messages, you know, from our parents, from our schools, from our caregivers, um, from from the groups and thing or teams that we're part of, you know, what's okay to be and what's not okay to be. You know, don't be too greedy, don't be selfish, don't, you know, be seen and not heard and, you know, don't be lazy. And we see these hear these messages and we actually internalize them um and as part of that we then decide oh i don't want to be that and then as an adult if we've not actually looked at what our soundboard operating system is it is it in tune or has it become out of tune then we're going to just a bring people into us that just plug right in um, or um, and we're going to project, you know, oh, I'm not that mm. um, without actually realising that mm, I am. Maybe I just I'm not aware of where I'm being that or where I have been that. Yeah. Mm. Two mm. things come immediately to mind as you talk about that, and one is like reclaiming anger. I feel like that's a big thing yeah. for women, a huge yep. one. The- <laughs> The top three qualities Ah. that people um, frequently disown, anger, Mm -hmm. (laughs) fear, um, and and hurt, Mm. you know. We, you know, often as children as well, we get hurt. We feel abandoned. We feel lost or, or some form of that. Um, and we don't ever want to feel that again. So we do, you know, we push it to the back of our mind, um, but pushing it to the back of your mind doesn't mean that it it goes away mm. or that it's resolved. And, you know, anger is a perfect one, and I agree that women, and I've certainly, I hands up both <laughs> sides, you know, have I experienced this one myself and acted it out, you know, that um you know it's it's empowering to just be able to say i'm really angry with you about x y or z uh but so many of us um don't want to rock the boat want to keep the peace um think oh it must be just me um and we don't actually express that anger in just a normal calm voice you know we go oh I'm not angry and it's <laughs> or do the passive aggressive thing I know, right? or the passive aggressive the silent treatment or the yeah. stone wall or you know any of those sorts of things and you know because it's okay to be angry because angry means that something's happening that you don't like mm-hmm. and that's okay and I know that you've um you've talked to your your um listeners previously about boundaries and this is where boundaries sets in because boundaries are simply what's okay and what's not okay for you Mm. um and you know certainly it was has been my experience that when I didn't set and maintain my own boundaries then I would feel resentful and my anger would rise but the reality is I'm the one crossing my boundaries because I'm not saying anything. I'm staying silent and being mm. the passive aggressive um, um, person. Or even when I did say stuff, um, which I did in, in my marriage, um, I then didn't follow through. You mm. know? I, I, I figured that if I said it, that was enough, but it, didn't I wasn't taking responsibility for maintaining that boundary and going okay well if 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 I've stated this nothing's changed I'm still feeling the same way then it's my choice whether or not I proceed or don't proceed yeah Mm. yeah there, there's so many examples of emotions we could talk about, but I think anger is probably a good one to stay with um, yeah. because I know I know personally for me that's been something that I've definitely had to 
explore and reclaim. And um, sadness is probably the other one for me. I'm I'm not as good at doing sad. Um, and I I wonder though how we know when we have an emotional quality that needs to be reclaimed. Like how are we, and, and that's where I'm th- saying maybe we stick with the anger. You sort of mentioned resentment. Is there sort of little clues that say there might be an emotion that you're ignoring or an emotion that you've pushed to the corner or something here that you need to see? Um, how do we start to pick up on the clues that there's something there to reclaim and be brave enough to actually do it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The biggest hint that uh, that that you've disclaimed something or, or need to reclaim something is by what what people or what what is it that someone is doing what behaviors are plugging right into you what's triggering your emotional reaction so you realize that you're getting angry well what is it that you're getting angry about um, and just noticing in your body and noticing you know, your your whole body changes, your, your voice changes, um, everything changes when you are feeling angry. So noticing um, other people that you um, get really prickly around um, is a really great signpost, you know, because mm-hmm. what we reject in ourselves we project onto other people and we see it in other people. But we've got to remember that every quality that we see in someone else also resides in us. Mm. Yeah. So is the sort of, did you say disclaiming? That's, I, that's, I'm, I'm like, is that, that's, that's a real word. I don't know yeah. why I've not really <laughs> thought about that. The opposite of reclaiming is disclaiming. When we, so when we are kind of maybe noticing, okay, I'm not doing a very good job of expressing my anger. It's not that we're not feeling the anger rise. That's what I think I'm hearing from you. It's like you might feel the anger rise, but then is it that we're just not skillfully communicating that? Or is it that it's coming out in destructive ways or harmful ways? What kind of shows us that I don't have a handle on this? Like this isn't an integrated part of me. This is something that I maybe need to be a little bit more curious about. Yeah, look, I, I think it can be both of those things, um, Erica. So if we um, if we haven't fully integrated, say, angry um, into ourselves, then it is going to come out in a destructive manner. And it's mm-hmm. that destructive manner is going to be blame, criticism, resentment, um, passive aggressive, stonewalling, uh, that type of thing, because we we want to just deny that it even exists with with us in us, and you know I think of it a bit like a beach. Have you um, had a, a blown up beach ball at mm-hmm. at the beach or in a pool? Try and put it under the water, and it's near impossible. It keeps popping up, and mm-hmm. that's what disowned qualities do. They keep popping up. So until we've actually reclaimed it so that we can use it in the appropriate setting without a heap of emotional um, baggage attached to it, then it's going to pop up in a not so pleasant way, but it's still going to pop up. You know, denying something doesn't resolve it. Mm. But the the thing is that, um, and one of the reasons that we don't deal with it that well and that we often do only start to deal with it when it has reared its head in a very ugly manner is that scientists estimate that over 80 percent of all of our actions and behaviors are done at a a unconscious level so until we actually become aware of this as a pattern um, and it's a pattern that perhaps I don't like and I want to change, um, then nothing is going to change. And you're just going to keep repeating that pattern over and over again. Mm. Um, one of the things that I have is I've got a, a checklist and I'll just go through a couple of them mm, here awesome. now. You know, um, 
So if these things sort of sound familiar to you, then it could be, um, you know, and the more that, that do sound familiar to, to them, then the more you go, hmm, perhaps I've got some work to do here. You know, mm -hmm. you often feel like the victim of other people's behaviour. Um, you prefer not to say anything when someone hurts you or cheats you. Um, you feel it's virtuous to put others ahead of yourself and you feel mean or selfish when you try and assert your desires. You often feel resentful be towards others because they don't seem to take your needs into consideration. Um, your mother comes over unannounced and then proceeds to tell you everything that you're doing wrong in your life, you know, and or your kids leave dirty clothes on the floor knowing that you'll always pick them up, um, you know. Your boss repeatedly asks you to work extra hours um, and could be on the weekends and evenings, but without notice or without additional pay. You know, now all of those things, if if your reaction to those is, if your reaction is, oh, you know, I really want to say no, mm -hmm. but I feel compelled to say yes because that's what nice girls do or good girls do, um, then I strongly suggest that, yes, you probably do have um, anger coming out um, in a not so great way. And that's mm. the thing, it does still come out. Um, I, I saw a Facebook post this morning from a friend of mine who was having a little bit of a rant about uh, someone else's behaviour to her that um, that she was calling um, abusive. Now, I, I don't know whether it was or, or it wasn't, um, and I don't know the situation, but I thought it really interesting because this is not the first time this person has posted something similar. Mm -hmm. So I thought it really interesting that, um, that she had gone to the effort of posting this on Facebook this morning and I'm like well that's and you know you're expressing your anger and your hurt mm. and maybe some abuse too if you want to put that word in via Facebook you've gone to all this effort uh, to say how hurt and how angry you feel about this um, when you know, who knows what the other per who knows what was actually said or done or what the context um of it was, you know. And not and the right audience, right? Like not you're not right saying audience. it to the person who actually it's, hurt you. Yeah. It's yeah. you overreact, it's an overreaction uh to something um that you know clearly wasn't resolved between the two parties when they exchanged words earlier. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what's the, well, I have two two questions, I guess, and I, maybe I'll save that one for a second. One of the things that I know that you do with women is work on self-care yeah. um, because I guess, and I guess my question is really almost going to be a little bit more rhetorical than anything, but I get, my guess is that when we are um, sort of disowning or disclaiming some of these qualities that we're the ones that lose out, right? Like it's it's our self-care, it's our well-being, it's our mental peace that is the collateral damage in that. Is that right? Absolutely. You know, the, the classic female um, or male, uh, the classic person that um, has a family, you know, kids take an enormous amount of time and energy and, you know, I'm not sure about you, but certainly my experience, I wanted to do everything that I possibly could for my kids, you know, mm -hmm. provide them with the best of, of what, what we were able to. And, you know, so that their life was going to be better than mine. Um, but what I also did was I stopped doing things for me um, and I was so busy fulfilling everybody else's cup, you know, my husband's cup, my kid's cup, um, that I was at the bottom of my to-do list yeah. every single day. And, it, you know, it was 
my exercise, my peace of mind um, that went out the window, how my peace of mind, you know, the things, my escape routes to give myself something uh, was overeating um, and frequently with the, uh, you know, frequently with a glass of wine or two mm. um, and sitting down, at, you know, finally getting to sit down at 9.30 p.m. at night uh, watching some inane TV show or, or you know, something um, just that was quite mind-numbing. Mm. Um, and that's not healthy self-care. That's uh, That's just... Yeah, it's not healthy self-care. So one of the things I teach people, um, particularly in every program that I run, we do a section every single week on self-care. And it's, mm. uh, you know, designed to get women to include themselves at the start of their day um, and at the end of the day so that they have that sense of peace of returning to themselves mm. um, and doing what feels good for them. Yeah. Mm, yes. I, yeah. uh, we, we work in, in similar fields in that regard and, and that I spend a lot of time working with people on self-care as well. And I, it, I, it always, it never surprises me when working with a woman and finding out that self-care is just practically non-existent. It is yeah. almost easier to be that person than to kind of claim these things for ourselves because there is this image that we've all kind of been raised with that says a woman is selfless. That's what a good mother is. That's what a good wife is. That's what a good friend is, this selfless woman. And every time I hear that word, I want to put a fist through the screen. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Because I it's agree. like, wow, we we use it as a compliment. And yet if anybody yep. called me selfless, I would be offended at this point because I'd be like, wow, I am not practicing what I preach. Yeah, my um, boundaries need tightening. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We need yeah. to just, we need to check in here. Yeah. Um, I do. It, like mm. none of us, certainly not my experience of being taught about healthy selfishness. You know, yeah. and selfishness is not to the exclusion of anybody else, but it is at least consider yourself as much as you're considering everybody else. It doesn't yeah. have to be a, if I'm selfish, I can't help other people. That's mm -hmm. not it at all. But it, it's like, well, what do actually I want and what do I need and what, you know, does this help me uh improve the life and and the trajectory of my life that I want to be on or yes. not and and make your decision from there yeah do you know what I really love about what you just said Rosalie is I love yeah. that you didn't say does this improve my life and therefore also improve the lives of my children and my family <laughs> yeah because that's the other one right we do that to be yeah. like well I'll justify it because it's not just me that benefits everybody does now that might be true but yeah can we allow it to be enough that we get what we want and we yeah. feel more nurtured, we feel more supported, we feel better because we're not martyring ourselves and, you know, literally discarding ourselves in the process mm -hmm. of trying to care for everybody else? Yeah. Well, how can we nurture other people unconditionally if we don't nurture ourselves? Yeah. And, yeah, and you know, I think this is the big thing that we often think that, um, yeah, if I do something, then someone else has to go without. You know, it might be your kids have to go out without, or your, your partner has to go without, or, you know, your mother-in-law has to go without, or someone else that we think of, of life as this zero-sum game. Mm. So if I have something, then that means someone else doesn't. And But life isn't like that. There's enough for all of us to go around. Absolutely. You know, you know I, I know this showed up for me too in then expecting my needs to be met by somebody else as well. Like without, I really without yeah. even saying it, without even being able That's to That's right. It, they yeah. should be able to read my mind. When is somebody no? gonna write in and yeah. just be like, I know what you need and here is how you have it. It yeah. was like it was such a rude shock to realize that that I mean that really was resentment at the end of the day. It yeah. was a rude shock to realize that I was the only one. 
playing yeah. that game, you know, um, inside inside these four walls. Yeah. yeah. Or keeping a tally, you know, mm. oh, well, when I've done this for this, this and this, this these people, then I'll get you know, then they'll yes. all come back and I'll get what I want. And, and then when they yeah, don't, what happens? <laughs> yeah, you become more resentful, mm-hmm. more angry, more blame is apportioned and more critical, uh, which is the opposite of being nurturing, kind and supportive and compassionate. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So mm. what do we do, Rosalie? What do we do? Well, I think... There's a few steps that we can do. You know, firstly, even having these conversations, because this is stuff that's just was not talked about um, Mm -hmm. until quite recently, really. I think there's four things that, that we can do. One is to do a deep dive into your feelings. You know, what are you actually feeling and do you even know what it is that you're feeling or have you just discounted uh, what your body's trying to tell you so much that you're now numb um, mm-hmm. and can't feel anything or your health has suffered so much that you've just had a health crisis that has just, you know, which to me is the universe's way of saying stop now. (laughs) I've given you all these warning signs. You've ignored them. Mm -hmm. You've got to stop. Um, And there are some great tools around about um, learning um, what you're actually feeling and how to express your emotions. There's the, there's a great tool called the feeling, the emotions wheel that I use with people. There's a website called the Emotions Lab, which I think is quite good. There's a number of apps that you can get that you can do what you're feeling at any particular time. There's a heap of YouTube videos. Mm. So getting, you know, I think that's a great place to start. What, you know, just being curious. And, and when someone, you 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 start to feel that you are being angry, then stopping and going, what is it about that person that's making me feel angry? Because it's nothing that they're doing. It's something that's within me. And that's a great guidepost that there's something for you to learn about what's going on in you. So deep diving into your feelings, I think, is really important. And then practicing your communication, speaking up, Mm-hmm. Being able to label your feelings accurately because a feeling is a feeling and it's like a wave. It comes and goes. It's temporary. Um, the, it, you know, you, you're not angry for all of your life. You're not <laughs> joyful for all of your life. You have moments of where you're experiencing anger and moments of when you're experiencing joy. But we're the ones that put the positive or the negative label on them. The emotion is just a descriptive term. Um, And depending on what your family um, upbringing was, for some families, anger is seen as a desired quality. Mm. And yet for other families, it was seen as a, a not so desirable quality. So, you know, having just being aware of that's amazing. Um, as I said, pausing, you know, if you s- start to notice, when you start to notice that you're feeling, whether it be resentful or you're blaming someone or you're being cr- overly critical, um, then pause and, and get curious with yourself. Don't get curious about the other person. Just get curious about yourself. What is it that I'm feeling? Mm. And you know, then, of course, there's working with a professional, whether that be a coach, um, you know, like you or I, or whether it be a, a psychologist um, or a therapist of some form, you know, working with someone who has, dare I say, done their own emotional work to start <laughs> with <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, can help guide you to what it is that you're experiencing, I think mm. is really powerful. Mm, and then, of course, finally, rewarding yourself, you know, acknowledging every effort that you make because we are talk about, you know, you're not going to you're, you're change this overnight. Um, 
it's not a unicorn and rainbows thing. <laughs> um, so acknowledging that we're after progress. So mm. every time that you go, oh, I noticed that, and it changed how I reacted or it changed how I felt about myself, reward yourself. You know, acknowledge that you're making progress and that's after all, all we can do as humans is, is to evolve, uh, you know, to be a improved version of ourselves. Um, and every time we reclaim an emotion that we haven't been using because we've forgotten about it for one reason or another, we're becoming back to being our whole selves. And that's, mm. that's something to be celebrated. Yeah. Mm, yes, absolutely. Celebrating the imperfection that is our humanity. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I really want to um, kind of come back to or loop around to for a moment is something that you said around, you know, noticing when we're kind of improving or we're noticing when things are changing, noticing when something shifted. And I'm fairly sure that I'm hearing you correctly, but I just want to reiterate this. We wouldn't necessarily find that we were getting angry less often or getting um, or not experiencing that emotion, right? Like the sign of success isn't, oh, I didn't feel angry all month. Yeah. Is it more about what did I do with that anger? How did I express that anger? Was I maintaining my boundaries? Did I speak my truth? Did I ask for what I wanted? Like, I, I, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that in terms of what are the signs of things are moving more towards the reclaiming of these qualities, because I don't think it's the absence of the emotion, but I, I would love to hear more about that. Yeah. I think you've nailed it, Erica. You've probably said it better than I could. Um, but, yes, it's not about not being angry or not um, expressing any emotion. Hmm. You know, that's being lifeless is Boring. not fun at all, really. <laughs> um, but it is about expressing it um, uh, appropriately. Um, and that is around just being able to say, hey, I'm angry about and not being able to communicate accurately what it is that you are angry about. I'm mm. angry that you didn't take the dishes out of the dishwasher because I know that we've talked about this, you know, so many times before. And, mm. you know, and and then, as you said, you're adding on your boundary about that. Okay. So, you know, you, you agreed that, you would do the take the dishes out of the dishwasher five times a week. Okay. But what I'm observing is that you're only doing that twice a week. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting angry and I can feel myself becoming resentful and angry because you're not, because my observation is that you're not living up to the agreement that we set together. Mm. Um, and then the choice is on the other person to then say, oh, yeah, I hadn't realised, you know, I'll do better. Um, or it's an opportunity for them to say, actually, I really don't want to do that five times a week. Can we renegotiate? Um, mm. So it becomes around communication, you know, or I don't want to do that. But, you know, I see that you're struggling with this. So how about we swap chores or, you mm. know, but, so it comes back to being able to have a fruitful conversation that enables both people to get their, their needs met without casting assertion on the other person as being mm. bad or mm. wrong. It's just that, you know, maybe the initial agreement that you made isn't working out for them for whatever reason but you know mm. and the other aspect is you know noticing when your reaction is overreacting you mm. know like it's fine to get angry at stuff um but is your reaction uh um kind of like out of proportion right out of proportion. Like, yeah. yeah i couldn't think of the word 
Mm. And I could think of an example. So um, during COVID, I was fortunate to be working in hotel quarantine. Mm. Um, And one of the things that we would frequently get phone calls about was people complaining about the food. Now, you know, understand most people when they rang to complain about the food the complaint had absolutely nothing to do with the food Mm. you know the complaint was they were stuck in a hotel room for 14 days they'd likely had a horrendous journey and and I'm talking really early days of lockdown here Mm. had a horrendous journey to get to where they were now or they had some other massive thing um, in their life Um, and so the complaint about the food was really actually (laughs) about the food and because Mm. so many of us don't feel heard or listened or valued um, and so the moment or validated so the moment that you know, you could, you, knowing that, you go to curious mode. Oh, okay, yeah, so tell me a little bit about that. And by the way, you know, I'm really curious, you know, tell me a bit about your journey to getting into hotel quarantine. And that mm-hmm. would open up the, uh, you know, some of the stories that I would hear mm-hmm. that was actually their real frustration um yeah and and then you know you get off the phone call and it was like they're a different person because somebody had actually spent invested some time to let them talk about how horrid an experience they had before they actually got into hotel quarantine yeah and that's interesting isn't it because at the end of the day listening to that story it's like that's not an overreaction at all it's just a misdirected reaction right right? so it's like yeah the overreaction I think we can we can feel oh wow I really overreacted to that situation but I'm definitely not overreacting to the multitude of things that led me here um that's and I always think of that in terms of you know how compassionate we need to be with ourselves when we're being curious about those things because it's like yeah that might have been disproportionate to the thing that was just said or the thing that just happened but I can see why I landed here and I all these opportunities that I had perhaps or all yeah. these moments where I wasn't seen, wasn't heard, wasn't understood, you know, breached my own boundaries, didn't look after myself, duh, 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 duh. makes sense that this is where we live. Yeah. But, yeah, you absolutely. know, hopefully then we can look back with curiosity. I, I think that that whole point of, um, you know, people just want to be seen, heard, validated in their experiences. What's the role like I often think community obviously is incredibly important. We need to yeah. connect with others for those things. But is part of reclaiming our emotional qualities also being able to do that for ourselves, to be able to be like, I'm willing to see and hear and validate the totality of my experience, not just the bits that feel neat and tidy. Yeah, I yeah, I totally do. And, you know, one of the things I I, I have made some progress on <laughs> and you know I, I I am a work in progress like everybody else you know is when someone because one of my um one of my disowned qualities uh used to be speaking up you know mm. I I my childhood uh there were things that eventuated in that that you know, I I can remember making a conscious decision to shut down, well, yeah. to to not speak, to to remain silent. So that has been one of of my design qualities that I'm working on, shall we say, progress. Mm-hmm. Um, and God, now I've lost my train of thought. Um, we were talking about accepting, you know, for ourselves the whole yeah. picture. And, uh, and so now when I see someone or observe someone doing something that may be out of proportion or they're really angry, you know, they're, exp- they're expressing um, anger um, or expressing rage or being vengeful or uh, being narcissistic, you know, I do stop and go rather than go, 
oh, that's terrible. I go, hmm, okay, I wonder what else is going on in their life mm -hmm. for them to be behaving that way. And I also go, hmm, when was I like that mm -hmm. or what was going on in my life when mm -hmm. I was behaving in that manner? Because I have behaved in all of those manners. Yeah. Um you know, in the past. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate your honesty in that regard. I'm, I'm always like, yeah, gosh, you know, I've had my moments of, of rage and absolutely just kind of off the handle at, at periods in my life. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, even this week, as we're recording this, I've had a few periods of like resentment where I've had to really get curious and be like, what am I not looking at here? You know, what, what's going on and where am I perhaps contributing my, my part to this? Yeah. Um, and I do really love that, that curiosity that you speak into of, you know, being, being able to be curious without then beating yourself with a stick over, yeah. it, you know, yeah. sort of that coming back to this idea of being a flawsome human, like it's fine. I, I can look at that part of myself without shame because yeah. it is a part of being human and I'm willing to meet myself compassionately as I get curious about that stuff. That's, I really love that as a kind of undercurrent to what you've been talking about. Yeah. And uh, uh, thanks, Erica, because, um, yeah, shame is a topic I have uh, had some experience in of, mm. uh, of feeling very ashamed for, for some of the things that I have done and, yeah. and not done and beaten myself up enormously for for various things. And at the end of the day, I, I am a human just like everybody else. And, uh, you know, um, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's what, what we learn from them. And I, th I think that's the, the thing that, you know, until we actually create our own awareness or are ready to dive into becoming aware of, of our operating patterns um, more, uh, then we're just going to repeat the same behaviours. We're going to yeah. get the same outcomes. They might look slightly different, um, um, and they might all be packaged up in a different manner, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be repeating the same. Um, yeah, and that's, mm. yeah. yeah, I've chose not to do that. Yeah, The human pattern, right? The human <laughs> pattern, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Thank you, Rosalie. This has been really um, fabulous. I've really enjoyed being in conversation with you. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, two questions before we go. The first one, I would love you just to let everybody know where they can find you and connect with you um, on the interwebs. Um, and then just if you have any final thoughts or anything you want to reiterate before we say goodbye. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Erica. I have loved our chat too. And I reckon we could, I, I know that we could chat for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Um, so in terms of finding me, um, uh, www.rosaliekwoods.com is my website. Uh, email address is welcome at rosaliekwoods.com. Um, my phone number is on the website um, as well. You can find me on Facebook under Rosalie K. Woods or LinkedIn under Rosalie K. Woods um, and feel free to, to reach out. Um, I have uh, a self-care freebie on my website to download. Um, I do have a boundaries one as well that's not on my website at the moment, but just reach out and I'll happily um, give that to you. And I do conduct both individual and small group programs and would awesome. love to join me on your own rediscovery of you because it's awesome amazing awesome. and I'll make sure I'm awesome. <laughs> I'll make sure I pop links to everything that you just mentioned yeah. in the show notes as well any yeah. final thoughts before we say goodbye yeah um I I really want to thank you for um for having this conversation today because I do believe that the more we can we talk about these things the more awareness that brings and and with that is what the catalyst of change is that if we're not even aware of what we're we're doing because it's just buried in our unconscious mind then we can't make changes um, and uh, you know my whole being these days is around ensuring that you know the next generation um 
has the opportunity to be more emotionally aware and more emotionally intelligent um, mm. than previous generations. So yeah. um, I want to thank you for your time and and your expertise as well, Erica. So um, thank you, yeah. Rosalie. It's thank been you. a treat. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back again next week.